Measures of central tendency attempt to identify the central position of our data. There is the mean, which tells us the average of our data. Median, which tells you the middle number if we arranged our data from the smallest value to the largest. And mode, which describes the most frequently occurring number. Under a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode should all fall in the middle. But in most other scenarios, these measures are not interchangeable. Each tells us something different about our data, and we may prefer one, depending on what it is we are trying to understand. One of the ways in which these three measures are different is in how sensitive they are to outliers or skewing. As our data skews left or right, the mean moves with that skewing. The median moves as well, but to less of a degree and our mode remains right at the peak. When the mean, median, and mode are taken together, they can be helpful for understanding the skew of our distribution. We'll come back to talk more about skews later in this chapter. The mean is used a lot in statistics on its own. It is a description that is most meaningful when we have data that is relatively normally distributed without a lot of outliers. In that scenario, we can reasonably expect samples to cluster around the mean. It's a popular measure when looking at company performance, where credit analysts like to look at the last three years of a company and form an average to understand how it is doing. It's also used to measure the expected default rates of loans and insurance premiums. Median is useful when we want to diminish the effect of outliers. Imagine a scenario where you are studying the salaries of several companies. If we include owners or high-paid executives, that might skew our measure significantly if we apply an average. Using the median diminishes the influence of top earners and gives us a more realistic sense of the salaries of typical workers in that company. Alternatively, when looking at the distribution of S&P 500 daily returns, there are frequently quite a few outliers. Finally, there is the mode. The mode is best applied when our data set is quite large and a curve is apparent. When applied to small data sets or relatively flat curves, it shouldn't be considered as too meaningful. But with a good set of data, the mode describes the most likely outcome. It's the outcome that occurs the most frequently. A call center trying to figure out the busiest hours of the day, the point when it will perhaps need the most staff, would ideally want to look at the mode. This would be particularly true in a situation where there is a bimodal distribution. In this scenario, both the mean and the median do a poor job of predicting when the restaurant will be busiest, as they land somewhere in the middle of our two humps. The mode would tell us exactly the peak hour. We can even apply a bimodal approach to identify multiple modes. Call centers, restaurants, marathon organizers, or any business that deals with seasonality can really benefit by applying the mode in data analysis.